Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minute with the Captains. I'm Captain Galilee. Today I have reading for me. Officer Zarai. All praise to the Most High. We're going to jump into a quick lesson entitled Christ like or cult like, right? Christ like or cult like, right? Because you have a lot of uh, rumors going around saying that Israel United of Christ is a cult. And what we believe is cultic and what we believe is not in the scriptures, right? But we're going to show you today in the Bible. That everything that we believe and everything that we're doing is the same thing that Christ did when you examine the scriptures, right? So let's jump into it. So one thing they say about cults, they say cults um, require members to spend a lot of time following certain rules, right? So what they're saying is basically when you join a cult, you are then forced to follow rules uh, and different guidelines um, according to that cult or be put out. Give me that real quick in Romans, the 16th chapter, and the 17th verse. Because remember, the apostle Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. He had the spirit of Christ in him, right? Let's see what he said. Get Romans chapter 16, verse 17. This is the book of Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Wait a minute. He says mark them, meaning... Uh, show, point, out, point out who they are in the congregation that do not agree with the doctrine that we have learned. Read that again. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. That's biblical. That's biblical. Our forefather, the apostle Paul, through the spirit of Christ, claimed, told us that we are not to associate ourselves with those that go contrary to the doctrine which we have learned. What is the doctrine that we've learned? Can you give me that real quick in the book of Proverbs, the fourth chapter and the second verse? What is the doctrine that we've learned that we are supposed to mark those that, that go contrary to? Let's see. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 2. Come on. For I give you good doctrine. Yes, I give you good doctrine. Good doctrine. Read. Forsake you not my law. The law, the law, the laws of God, God's commandments is the doctrine. That's the commandment. You understand? That's the doctrine. You have to keep the laws of God. When you come amongst Israel united in Christ, when you come amongst us who believe in keeping God's commandments and the faith of his son, a faith of his son, you have to do the same thing. Go back to Romans. Because they say that. They say, oh, you guys are cult because anybody that doesn't believe what you believe, they can't be amongst you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the same thing the Bible says. Read what you got. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. So I, I have a question. So if you go to work at a certain business, I don't know, Walmart or Sam's Club or Jiffy Lube or wherever you decide to go, or McDonald's even, where they have a core standard of how things are supposed to go. And then you come in and you start telling employees, no, nah, don't do it like that. You don't have to do it like this. No, you actually don't have to be here on that time. Come here at that time. What you think is going to happen to you? You're going to be fired because you are going against the core values of what that particular establishment has, has set up. We didn't set up <laughs> God's commandments. God's commandments was given to us as the Israelites and we're, we were commanded or told by the Most High, if we wanted to get eternal life, this is the way. Keep the commandments in faith in my son. Now someone comes in that same congregation and says, no, you don't have to keep the commandments. No, you don't have to follow the doctrine of God. No, you can do what you want to do. You can live how you want to live within the congregation. No, sir, that's not biblical, right? Go ahead. For they that are such... Serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. You hear that? For those that come in and say that you can do whatever you want to do, you don't have to keep the commandments that go contrary to the doctrine, which is the law. They don't serve Christ. That's what the Bible says. They are not servants of Christ. Here's the issue. In the Christian church, you allow people to run amok. You allow people to do whatever they want to do in your churches. And then when they come and they try to be a part of us and learn the truth of the law, the, the Bible, and learn they got to keep God's commandments, many of you Christians have an issue with that because you've never been held to a standard. You've never been forced to keep God's command, or excuse me, not forced, told to keep God's commandments because we don't force anything on anyone. You don't have to do it, but you can't be here. That's not a cult. That's Bible, right? Read it again in verse 18. For they that are such serve not 
our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. But their own belly. See, they, they serve their own belly. They serve their own lust, their own flesh. They don't serve Christ. If they're going against the doctrine and they're causing offenses and they're causing division, they are not of Christ. Read. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. See that? Deceive the hearts of the simple. If you're simple and you're emotional, you don't understand that what we're building here is the spirit of Christ. This is Christ's spirit here. That's why we call Israel united in Christ. Christ is about unity. When you come in here, you want to separate us. You want to cause divisions amongst us. You want to go contrary to the law of God that we've been taught and that we're teaching. You got to go. And that's biblical. Right. So no, another thing that they say about cults, they say cult members are forced to keep from, keep from having relationships with people outside of the group. Right or, or forced to cut off their family members. Let's see if that's in the Bible. All right, and we're gonna stay in the New Testament. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter thirteen, and let's read verse. Uh, let's start at verse fifty-four. The book of Matthew, chapter thirteen, in verse fifty-four. Come on. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, in so much that they were astonished. And said, whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? You know why he, they said, whence has this man this wisdom? Because they never saw him teach that way. Many of you brothers and sisters that come into knowing you're an Israelite, you become ecstatic. You become uh, overwhelmed. You become uh, so enthusiastic about the gospel that you start talking about the Bible all the time. And your family members aren't used to that. You start talking about the Bible all the time and your husbands and your wives and your children and your mothers and your friends. They're not used to that. They're not used to seeing you in that light. They say, whence has this man these mighty works? Where he get this wisdom from? You understand? Go ahead. Is not this the carpenter's son? The Bible says, is not this the carpenter's son? Don't we know this person? The same thing they say about you. Don't we know him? Don't we know her? They've never talked about the Bible like this. They never kept God's commandments. They was in the church with me. Read. It's not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters. Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. See that? They were offended in him. Is that cult-like or is that Christ-like? For your family members and the people that you grew up with to be offended at your speech now. To be offended that you're teaching God's commandments. To be offended that you won't come over for celebrate Thanksgiving. You won't come over to celebrate Christmas. You won't come over to celebrate all the holidays that you know are idolatrous, that you know are against God. You understand? These feasts, these um, birthdays, um, um, Mother's Day, St. Patrick's Day, you're not doing any of that anymore. They don't understand why. But they were offended at Christ for the exact same thing. They were offended at Christ for teaching the word of God in its true form and living it. If you follow Christ, they're going to say the same thing about you. Read again, verse 57. And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Christ said, you're not without honor, save in your own country and your own house. They speak evil of you. Because you follow Christ. Give me that in 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's read verse 1 through 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. You're living the life that Christ lived. When you start to keep God's commandments, you become an enemy to most people. Why? Because they're offended at the word of God. They don't want to keep it. That's not cult-like. That's Christ-like. Read what you got. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh... Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. When you come into Christ, it said arm yourselves with the same mind because Christ suffered in the flesh. They, so the Lord is telling us, by the way of Peter, the head apostle, that you're also going to suffer like Christ in the flesh. Right? Come on. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That's why. Because the world is sinful. Many of your family members, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in the truth of this Bible. And when you change and you start to apply the commandments that's in the Bible, they have an issue with you. You're the problem to them. You understand? They're offended at you just like they were offended at Christ. Notice Christ said, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own home and his own country where people know you. 
When people know you for a certain way all your life, and then all of a sudden you start teaching God's commandments, you start living your life according to the Bible, and you stop doing what they're used to you doing, you cease from sin, therefore you suffer in the flesh. Keep reading. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. To the lust of men, but what? But to the will of God. Wait a minute. Christ suffered in the flesh because he didn't live his life according to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Let's get that real quick. You know what I want. Give me Psalms, the 40th chapter and the 8th verse. Because you're going to learn today what the will of God is. Because many of you have thought your entire lives that you were keeping the will of God, that you were doing the will of God. Well, you're going to find out, brothers and sisters, you have not done the will of God. And you have not learned it. But we're going to teach you today. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, in verse 8. Come on. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. God's laws is his will. God's laws is his will. Christ didn't live his life to the lust of man. Meaning what? Christ wasn't going to no birthday party. Christ wasn't in the brothel. Christ wasn't at the strip club. You understand that? Christ wasn't breaking God's Sabbath day. Christ wasn't eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. Christ wasn't calling his mother on Mother's Day. Christ was keeping God's commandments. Therefore, he suffered in the flesh because he wouldn't live to the lust of man but to the will of God. He wanted to do what God said to do. Now you're doing the same, and they speak evil of you. Go back to 1 Peter. Read 4 and 3 now. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. So it said the time suffice us. What say? Read again. The time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, the other nations, to follow what the other nations were doing. Read. When we walked in lasciviousness. Because we walked in lasciviousness. We were whores and whoremongers. We was in the club, strip club, doing all kind of manners of evil, watching pornography. Right? Some of you may have been porn stars. Or had, had a thought to be in that lifestyle, in that industry, right? It said we walked after the will of the Gentiles. This is what the Gentiles do. They walk in lasciviousness, read. Lust. Lust. Excess of wine. Excess of wine. Going to the club, getting passed out drunk. That used to be you. You were that friend that we, everybody wanted to go to the party with because you were getting lit. Read. Revelings. Revelings. Going to the club. Going to the, the strip club, going to every party, the block party, all the time. You was the club homie. You was the person that people called when they wanted to go out and have a good time. That was you at one time in your life. Read. Banquetings. Banquetings. That's going to your Christmas dinner, your Thanksgiving dinner, your birthday dinner, your Mother's Day dinner. Read. And abominable idolatry. And you was all in the Christian church, all talking about five percenters, all going into Egyptology, all going into Islam. You was doing all that. You was tossing fro to and fro with every wind of doctrine. It didn't matter what um, type of doctrine any of your friends was in, they could all relate to you. You were that person. You were that confidant to them. Right? Come on. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. You hear that? God calls all that riot. Idolatry is riot. Banquetings is riot. Clubbing, lasciviousness, the, uh, the, 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 all the evil things that our brothers and sisters was doing, that we was doing at one time. God says that riot. So now that you don't run with them to the same excess riot, the excess of riot, now that you don't uh, uh, answer their phone calls when they call you to do evil because they don't want to change their life and you on a different path, now all of a sudden you're in a cult. But that's Christ-like. Christ rolled in the same spirit. Christ was moving. He was progressing. They don't want you to do the same. So now you're in a cult. All right? Another thing they say, they say members are required to spend time recruiting new group of members. Wait a minute. Give me the book of Luke, the 14th chapter, and the 23rd verse. They say, why are you always at that church? Why are you always at that cult? You don't have no time for me. You don't come around me anymore. You're, you're, you're in a cult. You, you, all you do is spend your time on YouTube watching those videos. All you do is spend your time out on the streets teaching the Bible or on what y'all call flyer missions or teaching class. That's all you do. You don't do anything with us. You don't hang out with us anymore at all. Anymore at all. You're, in, you're in a cult. You're in the midst of a cult. All you do is want to recruit more members for your cult. Huh. Let's see what Christ said. Give me Luke 14, 23. Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. See that? Christ said go to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Christ said to go to the streets and teach the people the gospel. 
That's the word of God. That's the word of God coming through, the son, through his son, Jesus Christ. That's a commandment. Go teach. Go and teach the people. Go ahead. And compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So that Christ, so Christ's house can be filled. You understand that? So the house of the Lord can be filled. That's what this is talking about. That was the commandment that was given. Give me that real quick in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Christ sent his apostles out to go teach the people. Why? So we can go home to raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's a commandment from God. Notice all these scriptures in the New Testament. The only time we went to the Old Testament is to show you what the New Testament is saying when it says doctrine or will. We in the New Testament. This is the same thing that Christ did. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, into ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But Christ told the apostles to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel in these various cities, to go and teach these people in these cities, to travel. That's what Christ told the brothers to do. Now, you're mad at us, or your, your mothers are mad, or your fathers are mad, or your family members, your wives or husbands are mad, that now you go to the Sabbath every weekend. Or now that you go to the feast days, or now that you go to the fundraisers, or now that you go and teach on the street, they mad at you, but you're doing what Christ did. You're doing exactly what he said to do. Keep, go to chapter 11. Go to chapter 11 real quick. Go to Matthew chapter 11, and let's read verse, uh, let me see. Matthew, no, go to Luke 10. I'm sorry. Go to Luke chapter 10. Just popped in my head. Luke chapter 10. Let's read verse 1. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. Come on. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. You see that? Christ went into the cities to teach. He sent the apostles or the elders before him to do the same thing. So is that cult-like or Christ-like? Is it cult-like? For members to be required to follow certain rules and to disassociate with people that don't want to do that, that's Christ-like. Is it Christ-like for members to not have strong relationships with people that are going against the doctrine or family members that hate God and are not respectful to what you believe? That's Christ-like. For them to speak evil to you because you don't do the same thing that they used to do, Christ-like. And for you to go out and teach the people to raise up the 12 tribes of Israel to bring your people in, that's Christ-like. We're not a cult. We're doing what Christ did. We're doing what Christ commanded us and the apostles to do. Right? That's what we're doing. Last scripture, 1 Peter 2. Let's read verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Come on. For even hereunto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. Christ left us an example. Read. That ye should follow his steps. Christ left an example that we should follow his, self, his steps. Christ didn't associate with people that hated God. He taught them. He rebuked them. But he wasn't associated. You might say, well, brother, didn't he sit with publicans and sinners? They believed. They were publicans and sinners that believed, and he was teaching them, and they changed. He wasn't rolling with people that didn't care about God or care about the gospel or didn't want to get right. He didn't waste his time on them. He, he spent his time with the people that were submissive and willing to follow, that were, uh, weren't prideful, weren't arrogant, weren't haughty, and that actually had the spirit to want to understand. Keep reading. Who did no sin. And also Christ did no sin. So when we teach you, hey, you got to keep God's commandments, you can't sin, which is breaking God's laws and commandments. You understand? When we teach you that, it's the same thing that Christ did. Go ahead. Neither was guile found in his mouth. So everything that we do or that we teach, we proved out of the Bible that Christ did and taught those same things. So are we cult-like or Christ-like? Hmm. Maybe it's not us. Maybe it's your Christian church. Maybe it's you, all right? So that's 15 Minutes with the Captains. I hope you got some out of the lesson. I'm Captain Get a Light to my right. Officer Zerai. And with that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. 
IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.